morning. Don't let the, uh, the green grass and what looks like sun deceive you. It is freezing this morning. Let's go check out my print. You don't even know what it is I'm printing. Let's find out what today's project is, shall we? Okay, let's down to the printer. Whoa, yes, it's a star. Okay, we've got our 3D print. As you can see, we've got our groove on the inside to put the LED strip and some clips to hold the battery. I'm using two AA batteries and I've got a holder that kind of makes them work like a 9 volt connector. And to go with that, I have this two wire to like 9 volt adapter. So I can place this on and then I've designed this to clamp the battery in place like that and as you can see it doesn't fall out it's nice and steady and I can then wire that into my tiny dev which means we also need a tiny dev here is one of my tiny dev packages that I've built I'm going to open that up now this is what you get inside the package you get a, a guide to what the different pinouts are you get well, let's, let's open it all up and have a look Okay, so we've got our guide here, we've got some silicon gel to obviously protect it from moisture and there's an assembled board and every board also comes with a, sorry every package also comes with a second board so you can make another one and you've got your program header if you need to use it. So I'm going to move all that aside, so we've got tiny dev, for this project I'm also going to be using an LDR and a 220 ohm resistor. The resistor doesn't really matter in this case and it doesn't really matter what the resistance is on the LDR because the software I'm going to use is going to constantly be moving the minimum and maximum values to compensate for how much light there is so it'll automatically adjust itself. And of course, whoops, almost forgot, we need some NeoPixels. Yay! So let's start putting this together. Okay, what we want to do first is solder our header onto our NeoPixel strip. And again, make sure that we do it with the arrow pointing in. I'm going to tin the end with my iron, just the little pads on the side. Now I'm going to take three pins. This is similar to what I did with my coffee warmer. So we now want to make sure that we're putting it the right way around. So there's our exit point where the strip has to come out. The strip will be sitting this way and we want the tiny dev to be sitting right about here and we need to make sure that we've got the directions correct. So in this case 5 volt is on top, ground is on the bottom. So if we look at the actual tiny dev you can see there's ground, pin 0 and V for VCC. So we want it to go this way. So let's just solder that together. Just want something to rest this against while I work. Just want to hold that still. And now we need to get our LDR and our resistor and we're going to connect those to the board. So what we're going to do is we're going to solder the LDR and the resistor legs together. Twist the leg of the resistor around the LDR but leaving some space at the end on the LDR so we can use that to solder onto the board. I'm just going to solder those two together. This end is going to go to VCC and this is going to be going to our pin 3 which is broken out just on top of the board here, or in this case it's going to be underneath. I'm going to just stick some heat shrink on. You don't need a lot of it, so probably half this amount. Oh, still too much. Maybe this end. There you go, that's pretty good. I'm just going to get my hot air. Awesome. Just for a bit of protection. Now, we're going to be using this on the back. Because when this is inside here, it's going to be sitting just there. We want the LDR to be sitting probably want it to be sitting around here in the middle as far away from the lights as possible. What I might do is bend it around 
So it's going to be sitting just underneath the battery. Around there, I think. So we take our trusty card and we can see that VCC is this top one here. So in our case it's going to be the bottom one on the outside. I'm just going to put it roughly in place if I can. I have to put some more heat shrink on this side to make sure it's not touching any of these pins. I'm going to cut some of these lengths off. That's pretty good if I just bend that over for the moment just to hold it still. We're going to need input here. Bend that over as well. And we need ground. The ground is on the opposite side of that strip. So it's a bit of twisting. So it's going to be roughly like this and I'm going to have to bend it in to shape once it's been soldered on. So let's get that soldered on. And face this way because there's clamp grooves on top. So I want to be able to utilize those. Be careful when I squeeze it together that I don't squeeze the uh, NeoPixel strip at all. So before I bend this in place, I also need to put power on. So I need to take my input for my battery. So as you can see here, we've got on the outside VCC in and then ground in. So I'm going to wire those up. I'm going to also do them from the back as well. This cable might be too long, but that's okay. We'll have plenty of room inside to feed all the wires. I can always strip it and cut it back if I need to. Okay, this might be a bit harder to solder. Okay, let me just, I'm going to cut, trim these off so I can clamp in the vise properly. Again, careful not to wreck the NeoPixel strip. They're pretty close, I'm just going to trim them off. Now all of my tiny devs actually ship with some strand test code on there for one pixel. So assuming you put some pixels on, you should see something if you power it up. So yeah, so right now I'm using two double A's, but there's no reason why you couldn't use triple A's. They'll just have a lower milliamp hour rating. Let's start putting all this together. Okay, so we've got four pixels on each side. You don't have to bend too much to put it in. Just be careful not to crack the strip when you bend it. It's going to be super gentle. It's a fairly tight fit on purpose. You want the pixels to be as close to the outside edge as possible. This is the first time I'm building this. Like all my projects, it's an idea in my head. I'm assuming it's going to work. I can visualize in my head how it's going to work, but I have not actually put one together before. So, it's either going to look amazing or it's going to look terrible. <laughs> wow, anything goes with me, right? Okay, and, right, so the only problem we have here is that the last pixel is pretty close to the edge of the board. I'm just going to fold it around. Oh, that's not too bad actually. It's squeezed in. Cool. So, what we need to do is just bend the LDR around enough just so we can get it underneath. And the board can also rotate a bit. Just be careful you don't rip off the headers that are soldered in. I just want to be really gentle here with what I do. I don't want to accidentally break it off and have to pull it apart again. Okay, that might do. I just want to get it facing away from these lights just so it can pick some ambient. All I want to do is have it detect ambient light change. Wow, so that's pretty flashy. Let's see what happens when it goes to a solid color. There we go, look at that. Beautiful. And you can see just around the edge. Oh, that's gonna, this is going to be awesome. Okay, I think it's time to put some code on. Now, the only problem with putting some code on is now that we've put the strip in, we have to pull the strip back out again so I can use my programmer on here. So let's do that now. I've just put some magic code on the nightlight. As you can see, I have a lot of light facing it right now and it's in its sleep state. The night light now has an on and off state rather than a I'm gradually getting brighter or gradually getting darker based on the light in the room. It's either deciding that it should be on or deciding it should be off. But there's a bit of a twist to that. So right now it's deciding it should be off because it's a lot of light in the room. If I turn the light off, as you can see the night light turns on. But what it's actually doing right now, if you just watch carefully, is it's slowly, well in this case, quickly dimming down in brightness. I've accelerated this at the moment. Right now it's dropping down five units every one second because I wanted you to be able to see the actual drop in brightness over time. But I will be changing that to maybe drop in brightness over about an hour. The reason for that is twofold. Firstly, they're pretty bright. They start off at 50% and although it looks really cool on the wall, 
it's too bright to keep running throughout the night. It also draws much more power at 50% than it does, for instance, at 15% brightness. So I wanted to ensure that the batteries lasted longer as well. Now, obviously, the colors I'm using right now are not ideal for nighttime. The blues and the greens aren't conducive to sleep. I will be customizing the colors on here to offer colors that are better for sleep time and nighttime. But for now, they look pretty cool, so I wanted to keep it that way. Let's have a look at how it looks on the wall. Wow, how crazy does that look? <laughs> Might be a little bit too bright. I think I'm going to print another version that has a bit more thickness in the middle so you don't see the battery pack. But wow, that looks insane. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. To all my new subs, welcome. If you haven't already subbed to my channel, please do so. Click the alarm bell to be notified when I've got new videos coming out. And until next time, sweet dreams.